everyone, welcome to a video about a solo I composed based on a licks by both Peter Bernstein and Pasquale Grasso on the tune Marmaduke. So I got this idea of composing a solo based on two guitar players last year when I did the same thing with the tune Undecided and I composed a solo based on licks by both Pirelli Lagren and Wawa Atta. And I had a lot of fun doing that because it's kind of a, a jazz puzzle, right? You need to, to compose a coherent solo, but it's two different guitar players and uh, they play very different styles. But then you need to find licks that somehow fit together or maybe they're very contrasting and that's the reason it works. I mean, it's not very clear why it works, but when it works, it works. So I did the same thing with Pasquale Grasso and Peter Bernstein. And there's an extra reason, it's because they did a bunch of gigs together and uh, some of the tunes of those gigs are on YouTube. And one of those tunes is Marmaduke, which is just a Charlie Parker contrafact on the chords of Honeysuckle Rose. So I, I described both their solos and then I, I puzzled together a, I think a quite coherent solo. I hope you felt the same way when you heard it in the opening of the video. So let's talk about the phrases I selected, starting with phrase number one. So this first phrase is a Peter Bernstein phrase. If you're familiar with the style of Peter Bernstein, uh, I think you, you could have guessed it. So it starts with this very lyrical, nice vibrato on the B flat. Uh, it's a lyrical blues lick. It, it doesn't maybe sound like a blues lick, but it's very bluesy. It, all those notes uh, are from a F minor pentatonic uh, scale. If you want to look at it uh, like that, but you could also just say, well, it's the, it's the four, which is a very bluesy note in F. Oh, I'm talking about F blues, right? Even though the chords are G minor, C7, he's just thinking F blues. If you want to play the four, people usually also do. They slide that note up and back. But here it just plays at four. And then if there's a straight F minor arpeggio. And if you play an F minor arpeggio on top of F major, you get a bluesy, bluesy sound with a blue note. And ending on that four. So even though you might not say, oh, that's a blues lick, it is bluesy. And in, in the context of Marmaduke and Hans Zucker Rose, even though the chords are 2-5, this kind of blues stuff works. And you will see more examples of it later in the solo. And then he continues with this. So the first thing to notice is that this is the, the lick that resolves from C7 to F, just by playing an F major scale, starting on the, on the fifth, on the C. Resolving on the major third of F. And now he continues this idea of playing things that resolve to F by playing this lick. So this part, that is a lick for C7 altered. It's basically just D flat minor. A lot of time people play that in multiple octaves, they play something like. Right, so that's what we have here. And now you might say, well, but the chord there is not C7, it's B flat seven or, or B diminished. 
it doesn't really matter. Those chords are there, just there to distract from the fact that it's basically just four bars of F. You could play this tune just by playing two chords. Let's C7 for four bars. Two, three, four, and then F, two, three, four. But basically it's just five, one. So to make it more interesting, you can add all these chords. But it's basically all F and if, if something is all F, you can also play lines that resolve to F. So that's what Peter Burson is doing. And then ending with this bluesy line for F. And this time it's not from the F minor pentatonic scale, but it's emphasizing the minor third and the six. Minor third, six, minor third. That's another um, typical jazz way of playing blues. That relationship between the, the minor third and the six. And uh, with those slides, it really works. And then we continue to the next phrase. So after all that bluesy stuff, I went for contrast and I took this phrase from Pasquale Grasso, which is a really a bebop phrase. The beginning is still a little bit bluesy, right? It's, it's based on an F major triad. So like Peter Bernstein, even though the chords are G minor C7 there, he's kind of thinking F blues. It's not as bluesy as Peter Bernstein played, but it's still kind of a blues effect. But now he's thinking C, Right, C7, and now 2-5-1 lick, a uh, bebop 2-5-1 lick. Going to the um, flat 13. Really nice 2-5-1 lick, which you could just practice in isolation, right? Maybe something like one, two, three. And now we get this. That is a lick for F7 to B flat, which is uh, what the chords are there. But then instead of playing B flat and B diminished, he goes to a bluesy lick. So there's a, this bluesy. If I put, put a slide there, it becomes even more bluesy. And then just a an ending phrase for F. That is a, a phrase that, that states F major. So it has a lot of interesting elements, starting with this semi-bluesy lick. Now a 2-5-1 lick, altered, a 5-1 lick to B flat, bluesy, bluesy in F, and a closing phrase that just states F major. And then we get to the next phrase on the bridge. But before we go to the next phrase, a word from my sponsor, and the sponsor of this video is my book, The Van Heemert System which is a book about how to learn to play jazz guitar from a beginner level to quite an advanced level. And instead of telling you about it now, I'm just gonna play a commercial which I recorded last year. And right after the commercial, I will be back with the next phrase. <laughs> everyone, you just listened to a jazz guitar solo on the chords of the tune Ergin. If you are a guitar player and you always wanted to play jazz but had no idea where to start, I have a solution for you. I just released a book called The Van Heemert System, which describes the system I used myself to learn how to improvise like you just heard. The methodology is completely based on learning a couple of shapes across the guitar neck 
that will enable you to improvise on every jazz standard you can think of. Of course, it's gonna take a while to become proficient at playing those shapes and how to apply them, but you don't have to learn anything else. No music theory, no skills, no arpeggios, no fretboard identification, no ear training, just learning those shapes and how to apply them. That's what I did myself and you just saw the result. If you are interested in learning to play jazz guitar like that and you are in the US, order my book in the web store of jungleguitars.com and if you are in Europe, send a mail to this email address. Bye. This is a Peter Bernstein lake, and I would say it's a typical Peter Bernstein kind of phrase. Because of the unexpected intervals, there's not many guitar players that would play this kind of lick, even though it's very difficult maybe to give the exact parameters, but the intervals are unexpected. The idea is, is quite simple. It starts with an enclosure to the C to prepare an F major triad. F major triad, now a C minor triad, and now an enclosure around the F, the root of the five chord. That's, that's it. Enclosure to the fifth of F, then F major triad, C minor triad, and closure to the F. And even though the ideas are simple, the way it's played does the intervals and the direction of the line, it's unexpected. So you really got to practice this to, to play it yourself. The fingerings I take are not the same that Peter Bernstein takes. Um, it's because I'm a, a gypsy jazz picker. So the, to, to play his lines, I usually have to change some of the, uh, the fingerings. The notes are the same, but the fingerings are different. So now we get to B flat, but instead of resolving immediately, Peter Bernstein does a typical Peter Bernstein thing. Uh, I've heard him talk about it in a workshop that he likes to delay the one chord. So instead of, of, of resolving to the one immediately, he just plays a short 2 5 1 lick. That is a lick for C minor, but that's an E flat major uh, 7 uh, arpeggio, which is something that you would play on C minor. And now there's a lick for F7 altered. That's the same lick he played in the first in the first phrase when when he played it on C7. Then you get a D flat minor arpeggio, and here it's F7, and they play a G flat minor arpeggio with an added note. And then an altered skill. And now the resolution. But the resolution is very short, because it, it, it's just at the final part of the B flat. And thus he's delaying that one chord that he really likes to do. And it's also a very appealing sound, right? Because you hear the rhythm section uh, resolve to one, but then there's still tension in the line of the solo player. So again, the whole line, one, two, three. Great line. And then we get to the next phrase. This lick is not Peter Bernstein, it's Pasquale Grasso, but I really think it fits together. It's, it's in the same region of the guitar and rhythmically it also fits. But of course, this is a really typical, typical people thing. Now he also plays an F major triad, just like Peter Bernstein played a E flat major triad on C minor. The chord here is G7, but you could also think D minor G7. So then on D minor, you would play an F major triad. Now we get G7 and he emphasizes that sharp 11. It's that sound, and that's a sound that's really associated with the dominant on the second degree or the fourth degree. So, but now we're in F, so the fourth degree would be B flat, so then we would get this sound, but now it's the second degree, so G7. So now we get the C sharp sound. So he's playing a D minor major 7 arpeggio, which is a really convenient heuristic to, for yourself, if you want to play that sharp 11 sound, you just think about the two chords, which is D minor, and then you play D minor major seven. Now we have a typical bebop. That's that's kind of a bebop lick for G7. And closer to the third, and closer to the root. And now a lick that is based on the C7 dominant bebop scale. 
I wouldn't think of it as that, but if you want to, um, if you want to analyze it, th this is one way to do it. I would just learn this lick. It's super nice to play on a long two five with both chords being a dominant. So two bars G7, two bars C7, that kind of thing happens all the time. I made videos only about that, but this is a great example of, of a line that you could play on it and that you should practice on different songs or maybe in several keys or maybe even all 12 keys. And then we get to the third A with the next phrase. So we switch back to a Peter Bernstein bluesy thing. And it's, it's really simple blues, but it's super tasteful, right? He doesn't do any flashy triplets in this line or, or pentatonic stuff. He's using the same principle as he did earlier by emphasizing the six and the minor third or the major third in this case, but because of the slide, you still get this emphasis of the relationship between the six and the minor third. So, so this, these trails you can play in several ways. You could do, you could pick all the Fs if you want and do a hammer ons for the G, or you could a hammer on pull off the second time. So, whatever you want. Right? So, it's, it's only that, it's basically just a D minor arpeggio with a slide to the fifth of D minor. And then this phrase, that's not Peter Bernstein, that again is Pasquale Grasso, because I needed a way to end this A part, and, and I found this phrase really fits. Now, in the original solo, uh, Pasquale Grasso plays this an octave higher, like this. But the Peter Bernstein lick ends low, so that's why I transposed it down. And somehow, it really works together. By the way, you could also do hammer-ons for that slide. I mean, that almost sounds the same. Maybe it's a little less vocal, but I think on a, on a gig with a rhythm section, you, you really wouldn't notice the difference that much. Maybe the hammer-on is a little bit easier even. You don't have to um, move your hand back and forth. You can just stay in position. That's it for this video. And of course, there is a second chorus. I realized that, and it has that really nice Peter Bernstein chord solo in it and some really cool Pasquale Grasso licks you saw it in the beginning. And I will make another video about the second chorus, but especially for my patrons over at patreon.com. So if you would join there at the lowest tier, the five euro tier, you can download the tab that you saw on screen today. But if you join there for the 10 euro tier, you get access to the exclusive video I'm gonna make later this week about the second chorus and also a bunch of other exclusive videos as well, which I made in the past. So go check that out if you're interested. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon, all that good stuff that really helps me out. I know everybody says it, but it's the truth. So if you really like it, please like it right now. Just hit the thumbs up. And of course, hopefully I will see you in the next video on my Patreon or right here on YouTube. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.